A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, of a priestly family in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. This day I set you over nations and over kingdoms, to root up and to tear down, to destroy and to demolish, to build and to plant. I will sing of your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will save you for salvation. For you are my hope, O oh Lord, my trust, O oh God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. I will save you. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord, Lord. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds, large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep, and when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit. A hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise 
as we <clears throat> read this gospel selection from the Gospel of Matthew, one often wonders, well, why would the sower sow the seed on such unprepared soil that's not ready to receive the seed? And I read uh, in a commentary once that uh, in the days of Jesus in the Near East, the sowers would broadcast the seed and let it grow wherever it fell upon good ground and not worry about so much whether the ground was ready and prepared to receive the seed. They would broadcast the seed. And in many ways in the church, we broadcast the seed of the word of God, especially places like this, uh, where Catholic radio, Catholic television, continue to broadcast the word of God. But in every parish, every Sunday and every day, we broadcast the seed of the word through the proclamation of the gospel, through other ways that we share, through uh, scripture study programs, through studying and praying over the Bible and Lexio Divina, we are constantly striving to be sowers of the seed of the word of God. When you think about that soil that's rich, as Jesus describes it, it's ready, it's rich soil, it's ready to receive the word of God. That's really about what all of our catechesis, our Catholic schools, our religious education programs, all the ways that we strive to pray in our daily life. These are all ways to uproot sinfulness from our lives so that we are that fertile ground ready to receive the word of God, to have the word of God implanted in our minds, in our hearts, and in our soul, so that it can bear good fruit and be an abundant blessing to the world because of the goodness which the gospel proclaims, which the gospel brings. Today is the feast of Bridget, St. Bridget. And Bridget was a woman that lived in the 12th and 13th century. She died in 1373. She was a mother and a wife, a mother of eight children, and she was very dedicated to winning the conversion of her husband through prayer and persuasion, and she did that. Bridget was also a wonderful mother, and one of her daughters even became a saint uh, in following in her footsteps. She started a religious order after her husband passed away, even went to Rome. Bridget has a tremendous devotion to the wounds of Christ, to the suffering and the passion. She meditated on that frequently, and she was given promises, uh, promises about praying through the wounds of Christ and identifying our own sacrifices and suffering with the word of God, and especially in the passion of Jesus Christ. Bridget shows us a lot. And in the Magnificat today, she offers a reflection which fits beautifully with the gospel. Evidently, the Virgin Mary appeared to St. Bridget, and she identified herself as the Queen of Heaven. Father Peter and I are here to visit with Father Mitch this evening about an apparition that happened in Wisconsin over 154 years ago. Mary there identified herself also as the Queen of Heaven. Listen to what she said to Bridget. I who speak to you am the queen of heaven. I am as it were a gardener of this world. For when a gardener sees the rise of a strong wind harmful to the little plants and the trees of his garden, at once he runs to them quickly and binds them fast with sturdy stakes as well as he can. And thus he comes to their aid in various ways according to his ability, lest they be broken by the rushing wind or wretchedly uprooted. I, the mother of mercy, do the same thing in the garden of this world. For when I see blowing on the hearts of human beings the dangerous winds of the devil's temptations and wicked suggestions, at once I have recourse to my Lord and my God, my son Jesus Christ, helping them with their prayers and obtaining from him his outpouring of some holy infusions of the Holy Spirit. We can count on the Blessed Mother who is the greatest witness and evangelizer of all time. And she is a protectress of our soul, of our mind and our heart, that the seed of the word of God can be planted within us and can come to fruition and bear fruit. And that we, as through our baptism and confirmation, and certainly through ordination, we are called to be witnesses to that world by speaking verbally and with the quality of our witness of our lives, 
we too are to proclaim the Holy Gospel today. And we can ask the Blessed Mother to intercede for us, to help protect the gardens of our souls and the souls of all those to whom we are ministering, people in our family with whom we pray with, people in our neighborhood, people right close to us. Often we make perhaps the new evangelization something too complicated. The new evangelization, which is restoring confidence in the gospel of Jesus, is as close to you and to me as is our own mind and heart. It's as close to you and me as is your husband, your wife, your, your daughter, your son, your grandchild, your nep nephews, your nieces, your family members. The opportunity for the gospel proclamation is as close to you as the people with whom you live and work. Every moment you are alive and breathe, you are to be a witness to the Holy Gospel, as am I. We know how difficult that is at times, because sometimes our gardens get weeds growing up in them. And sometimes we have to be purified and go to the sacrament of reconciliation often so that our garden is ready to receive the word of God. As we make ourselves more and more, as they say in Italian spirituality, disponibile, available, as we make ourselves more and more available to the power of the Holy Spirit to do the work of the gospel, we need to ask the Blessed Mother to intercede for us, to take care of the garden of our mind, heart, and soul so that we are well prepared to be nourished every day on the word of God and on the gift of the Holy Eucharist which nourishes us at such a deep, deep level, we cannot possibly measure it. Often we take that for granted, don't we? Those of us who come to Sunday Mass every Sunday, those of us who come to daily Mass, we can take it for granted. But we too have a greater accountability because we receive this gift of the sown seed of the word. We have the gift of the Holy Eucharist, which is Jesus' very body and blood, soul and divinity. We get to receive how blessed we are, how fortunate we are to be able to receive this tremendous gift of Jesus Christ himself. But then we can't hoard these gifts for ourselves. We have to go out. We have to go out and to preach the word, to teach the word, to share the word. People who are shut in their homes because they're suffering with a terrible illness or they're all alone. Sometimes just reaching out can help, making a phone call, typing an email, getting on Skype if you get on Skype, and going to visit somebody or allowing somebody to come and visit you if you're shut in your home. It also means using the suffering of your life, not to waste that suffering, but to use it as good seed for the salvation of other souls. Perhaps in your suffering, you are being asked to bear the weight of somebody who needs to meet Christ and can't quite do it for some reason. Maybe your suffering freely and joyfully offered will help liberate someone else to say yes to Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, this is the new evangelization. Not to be absorbed in our own thoughts, not to be so preoccupied with all of our troubles and difficulties and all those things that happen in life but to say, Lord, use me. Here I am, use me in whatever way you wish, whether that way is large or whether that way is small. We can learn a lot from the Blessed Mother. She was so simple, so humble. Saint Joseph, no recorded word of his in any place in the gospel or the church. And yet he is still speaking so profoundly by that silent witness of tremendous love and service. So we are all called to be saints, each and every one of us, through our baptism, our confirmation. God wants only the best for us. So when the world tells you that you're all wet or you're old fuddy-duddies or something like that, that's a lie. Don't believe it, don't believe it. We are being prepared for the coming of the kingdom of Christ. And we are being called, each one of us, to till the soil of our garden so that we can be alive and ready and a fruitful plant when Jesus returns, whenever that will be. That's his business, that's his knowledge, but it's our business to be ready at all times and in all places. May God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.